Hi there, and welcome back to the future of documents. I'm Holt Skinner, and I'm a developer advocate for Google Cloud. Previously, we looked at document AI specialized processors and how they can provide intelligent insights into certain document types by providing consistent schemas and normalizing data to reduce the amount of pre and post processing you need to perform. However, Google's pre-trained models only cover a finite set of document types. What if you have a unique type of document and want to get the same detailed information, or you're not getting the accuracy you need from a pre-trained processor? Well, this is where Document AI Workbench comes in. Document AI Workbench covers customized processors, which is one of the key building blocks of Document AI processors. Document AI offers the ability to uptrain existing processors or create new processors completely from scratch to get the most accurate information from any document type. The good news is, you don't have to be a data scientist or ML specialist to make models. Rather, you can create or uptrain models right from the Google Cloud Console. This works very similarly to AutoML with Vertex AI. Let's start with uptraining. Suppose you have a document format that's very similar to one that has a pre-trained processor, but just doesn't work the way you want out of the box. Maybe it has custom fields that aren't detected by the pre-trained processors, or the processor output just isn't as accurate as you'd like. Uptraining a processor allows you to create your own versions of processors that are based on pre-trained processors. You can extend the existing schema to extract new fields, or you can create a processor to read a new document type that has a lot in common with an existing processor. This reduces the training and development time required because the model has already been trained on lots of documents. Custom processors can be used when you have a type of document that isn't similar to any existing processors. You can create a new processor from scratch that allows you to extract entities using your own document types. Let's look at some examples. First, we'll look at an invoice from a fictional veterinary office. The invoice parser can extract standard invoice fields like invoice number, supplier name, and due date. However, this invoice also contains the pet's name, which we also need to extract, and the invoice parser doesn't recognize this field out of the box. This would be a case to use uptraining because it includes many fields that are common for invoices. So we can add pet name to the schema and train a new processor version that can be extra specialized for this document structure. Here's what a partial output could look like for our uptrained invoice processor. This output includes existing fields such as supplier name and receiver name, and also includes our custom pet name field. Next, let's look at this patent record from the US Patent and Trademark Office. These documents follow a consistent structure, but there isn't a pre-trained parser that works well with them. We can create a custom document extractor to recognize and extract the fields in these records using a custom defined entity schema based on the outputs that we're interested in. Here's what the annotations and output could look like. Creating custom and uptrained processors follow the same basic steps. Let's go through the workflow in the Cloud Console. Here's how you can get started with an entity extraction processor. Be sure to check out the code labs and documentation in the description for more details. First, you create a new processor. This works the same as any other processor you'd want to use. Select Custom Document Extractor to create a brand new processor, or select a specialized processor type to use uptraining. Then, you import examples of the documents you'd like to parse. We are creating a customized machine learning model, so we need to provide Document AI with detailed and labeled examples to teach it how we want this type of document to be understood. Next, we define the document schema using labels for each entity we want to extract. Then, we use the labeling tools to select the parts of the document we want to associate with each label, and continue labeling documents until we have enough examples for our ground truth training and test data sets. The training data will be used to define the model that will be used for processing, and the test data will be used to evaluate how well the processor performs. Next, we can start training a new version. This will take some time, but uptraining can be faster because we're building on top of a pre-trained model. After training is done, we can evaluate the model using our test set of labeled documents to determine how often each entity is extracted correctly. The evaluation tool uses standard metrics such as precision, recall, and F1 score to determine the accuracy of the trained model. If the evaluation looks good, the new processor version is ready to be deployed and used for predictions. Each version can be managed and used for processing independently. After the processor version is deployed, we can use it exactly the same way as any other specialized processor. We can make batch or online processing calls, extract entities, and send documents for human review. 
Keep in mind, you can always add more label documents for training and testing and create new versions over time to get the best results. After you've created the first version of your processor, you can enable auto-labeling, which will use earlier versions to label the entities for you. You'll just have to verify and approve the labels to use them for training and testing. Today, we've looked at Document AI Workbench, one of the newest features of Document AI which allows you to create custom processors and uptrain existing specialized processors. Now, it's your turn to use Document AI Workbench. Check out the uptraining and custom processors quick starts linked in the description for step-by-step -step guides on how to use these features. And be sure to check out the cloud documentation for the latest information. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.